six years, I think it's been since you last had one. Pretty close. Late 2018. How do you feel? Were you beginning to wonder if it was ever going to happen again? Well, <laughs> progress was kind of slow until Luke came along and, and put his supercomputer to work. Uh, once he did that, I was pretty sure we'd find one within two or three years. Yeah. And tell me about how you found out. What was the big moment like? Well, um, Luke emailed me that, uh, you know, in the past we had uh, missed a couple of primes because they just sat in the database and it's supposed to automatically email me when it when one that comes comes in and, and it, that failed. So he wanted to let me know, don't miss this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, it was pretty exciting. And uh, I think Luke was pretty excited too. Yeah. In his understated way. <laughs> I haven't actually spoken to him. We've, it's all been done by email with Luke. Okay. So I have spoken to Luke. And the thing, one of the things that struck me was how much personal resources and time and money he's put into this thing he said it could be close to two million dollars yeah that, that's a hefty chunk of change how do you feel about how much effort he's put into it though and how much of himself he's given to it it's pretty special isn't it it's it's staggering how much how many results is super supercomputer using gpus puts out i mean before he started we were getting like 300 tests a day and at, at his peak, he was turning in 3,500 a day. So he was 12 times all the other GIMPs users combined, which is absolutely staggering. Did you find out after the first probable test, or did you did you only find out after the, the second test? Like, were you did you live through that limbo? Uh, well, first of all, there's not much limbo there. The chance of a probable prime test turning out not to be prime um, is, for all intents and purposes, zero. <laughs> okay. So no, but he noticed no, notified us after the 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 full primality test had been run. Does this change the face of the GIMPS project? In my head, GIMPS was always like, you know, the little man and the little woman running a computer in their office, hoping they're going to be the one to strike at lucky. I mean, this is this is get industrial now. Yeah, well, I guess that de depends upon Luke. It could go back to the old mom and pop shops uh, uh, finding the next prime, or he might stick with it. I I don't know how ma many how much of his resources he wants to devote to future computing. What do you want? How do you feel about it as the founder of GIMPs? Because there is something romantic about the everyman doing it, but there is also something nice about the numbers rolling in. So, Yeah, well, I've, I've been at this a long time now, so I'm kind of happy either way it turns out. Um, yeah. I, I, it, it can go either way. I, I'm happy no matter which way it goes. Obviously, one of the big targets is the, the 100 million digit one. That's the one you've got the big prize money on. We've now got over 41 million digits. How far off is that? Is the 100 million? That's exceptionally hard to get from 40 million to 100 million. Um, each Mersenne Prime is it's an order P cubed uh, time complexity problem. In other words, just going from exponent 80 million to 130 million let's say that costs uh yeah two million dollars <laughs> um to go from exponent 130 million to exponent 330 million that's what you got to what triple the exponent and here we didn't even double the exponent so you're looking at say four times the exponent size but you put that in a p cubed time complexity formula, you're looking at four, six, 64 times harder. Or 2 million times 64 would be $128 million he would need to invest to 
probably get there and still no guarantee of success. Yeah. So I, I think I'm not going to live to find that 100 million digit prime. It's you don't think so? I don't think so. Ah, oh, you deserve to see it. <laughs> well, I've seen a, a million and I saw 10 million, so I'm happy with that. When these numbers finally emerge, rather, I'm not talking about the the full the full digits because that's impossible to hold in your head. But when you finally see the exponent that gives it to you, they're quite manageable numbers. Do you do you feel anything towards those numbers? Like there you are. Oh, it was you. Like or to you, could it just be any numbers and you don't care about that? Or do you think, oh, do they have a personality at all? No, they don't have a personality, but. Each time one is found, I, I it just I think in my head, damn, that's a massive number. <laughs> and Forty million digits is just it's it's mind boggling how big that number is. I mean, number of atoms in the universe is probably what ten to the seventieth, seventy digits, and here we're talking about forty million digits. So it's it's just incredible. But the exponent is quite a small number. It's just, you know, it's in the millions, isn't it? Or like, it's not that big a yeah, number. Well, when you use exponentiation, the number of digits grows rather rapidly. <laughs> I know this is a question you must get sick of answering, and please don't think that I think there needs to be an answer, but what's the point of this? It's fun. I mean, we do things for fun all the time. I mean, the joy of discovery. Uh, for me personally, I enjoy the computer programming problem, which is optimizing the the whole process from the program written to the algorithms used. That's my joy. Uh, other people who download the program, they they like each time you test one of these things, you have a one in a million shot of, of finding a new prime and, and having a little bit of glory. So, you know, for different people, they get different things out of it. What would you say to someone who says people as smart as you and as clever as Luke could be applying all that computer programming skill and ability to matters of health or things like that to, to, to for the betterment of mankind? Well, I don't think you want me involved in matters of health. <laughs> but uh, Dr. George, I am not. Um, People have to do things that they enjoy. You know, if if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're really not going to make great strides. And I I had my business career long ago where I where I did things like kind of help technology along, and so did Luke. So yeah, now he's taking a little vacation and doing something he enjoys for fun, and and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good answer. I'll tell you what my answer is. My answer is, what's the point of curing cancer and living a long time if we can't spend those extra years on Earth doing things like finding Mersenne primes? Yeah, there you go. What next? What next for GIMPs? Do you now then just sit back in your hole and wait for another discovery? Is there anything you guys can do to speed things up or improve things? Or not that I know of, but you never know when there's going to be another algorithmic breakthrough that we got to get back to coding and improving our algorithms and improving our programs. But for now, it's sit back and see if we can't find another one. Oh, congratulations. Because I know you're a co-discoverer because of all the all the stuff you've done until now. I know you get your name on the discovery too. So congratulations to you. Well, thank you very much. It's It's been a joy, Ryan. It's nice to finally meet you. You know, everyone who knows anything about number files is a super fan of what you guys are doing. And uh, so this is good. I can imagine that. I, I mean, when I was young growing up, I, I saw that postmark two to the one, one, two, one, three minus one. And you know, my dad showed me that. And I was hooked ever since. The postmark? Uh, yeah, the, what is Gillis's prime? Two to the, 11,213 minus one. Everything that the university postmark machine stamped, see, when they sent out mail, had a little postmark, two to the 11213 minus one 
is prime. If you go to uh, t5k.org, um, you know, what university Chris is Galway, that? 63, I think. Which university? Uh, Chicago, Illinois, Urbana, Illinois. Yeah. I guess University of Chicago. Um, no probably, no, and they, I'm guessing they were doing I'm guessing they were doing that to inspire people like you. And they did. And they did. And, and Gimps has inspired other people. I mean, people find prime numbers fascinating. They just say, oh wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I was six years old. I, you know, hand, I, I was doing hand, paper, and pencil, you know, with prime numbers. You know, three-digit prime was big to me. And someone found a three thousand digit prime, and you just go. How did they do that? <laughs> and and you know, later on, you're intrigued and you go find the answer to that question. Brilliant. And he was, you know, well in the top of the leaderboard for, you know, first primality tests of the past year. I'd seen someone else had, you know, tried to do a burst in the cloud to find one in years prior. Um, but from a glance, it kind of looked like no one was really treating it as a race. Um, you know, it was just sort of a, you know, put it into the bucket, see if it comes out eventually. And, you know, I'm looking at it. It's been, it had been about the longest period of time ever since a new Mersenne Prime had been discovered, at least through the GIMPs program. Um, 